You are listening to The Michael Lodge Show. Wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, yeah, and some politics. Let's get started. And it's Friday. Thank goodness it's Friday. But it doesn't matter to me. I've got so much work on my desk. I'll be working the whole weekend. But I'm glad it's Friday. I'm glad that you guys are going to start to slow down. That's what it's about, right? Remember this earlier in the week on one of my podcasts I said. On Friday I was going to call Friday uh, Friday's podcast. The title was going to be. Let's talk about politics and then throw up. <laughs> I still like the title. I'll use it for later. But, you know, I, I said I was going to talk to you guys on Friday about politics. And then I thought, you know what? Why? You know what? We've got stupid politicians. <laughs> and the more you talk about stupid and the more you talk about hate, it doesn't do any good, right? The only options that you and I have... To remove any of these people from office is to vote them out, recall them, and fight them. That's that's all that we can do. If we want to have any kind of a voice, that's the only three options that we have. Now, I, I still say continue fighting. It's, you know, if you believe in something, fight for it. If you believe that Biden has gone off his rockers, fight for what you believe in and Fight them back. Fight the White House back. But I'm not going to talk about that today. I'm not going to talk about politics. Instead, I'm going to tell you a story. When my mom passed away, she left me a house up in South Carolina. Now, when you look at the house, you would think that it's it's a mobile home, but it's not a mobile home. It's on foundation. It's got... It's got, um, it's built like a house. It just, it just so happens it looks like a house. I don't know what possessed people, but they began putting this fiberglass siding on that made things look like a house. But it's not a house. It's got a basement. It's got everything in it to be a house. So when she left it to me, I was, I thought, what am I going to do with this? I don't really want to live out in South Carolina because I was living in Los Angeles at that moment, but I decided to move out to to live part-time in South Carolina in the house while I fix it up and repair it because my mom had become so old that she just left the house, let the house go. So I had to rip up all the carpeting and rip up uh, a lot of, well, almost everything almost I had to rip up because there's mice in there. There was It was just a disgusting mess. So I was traveling back and forth from Los Angeles to my office there in to uh, South Carolina. I was living half a year in South Carolina, half a year in Los Angeles, trying to get this house done. Finally, I was able to move completely there and only went out to Los Angeles for tax season. And as I was Working on this house, I said, you know what this house needs for character to be a really southern house? It needs a porch. And so I built this huge porch that ran from one side of the house, I mean one end of the house, all the way to the other end of the house. Nice and wide where you can literally throw parties. And So I built this house, uh, I built this deck, this porch, Put a roof over, put a tin roof, so when the rain hit it, I could hear the the rain on the tin roof. It was a very relaxing thing, and I all built it all by hand. It took me two years because I was, I and my um, stepbrother were the only ones working on the house. <clears throat> but there was this big oak tree right in front. I love that oak tree. 
it was big, its arms were all entangled, and it was reaching out, and it, and it went over the, the front lawn and a little bit of the house. It was a beautiful oak tree. It must have been, I would say, maybe over, may, my, almost getting close to 200. It was so big and around that you could not even put your arms around it. It was just, you literally had to walk completely around it because it was so big. And it was getting old. And it was getting frail. But I love that old tree and I let it live on and let it live on. Well, I sat on the deck on the porch. Sipping my coffee in the mornings. These little ladybugs would land on me. And I love the ladybugs. You know, when you see a little ladybug... You don't want to really smash it or destroy it, right? You really want to hold it in your hand and just watch it. Because you're thinking, how can this little round, half round thing fly? But I love ladybugs, and I always have. What I found out is that when a tree is in trouble, especially with aphids, it sends out a fog and that fog attracts the ladybugs because the ladybugs then go to the tree and begin eating the aphids that that are sitting there aphids can produce hundreds and hundreds of thousands of babies every year on a tree so the tree protects itself and sends out this fog and it has a smell to it and it attracts the ladybugs and here comes the ladybugs and they begin Cleaning the tree of the aphids that are there. So the tree literally calls for help. And the ladybugs come running. And they begin eating and destroying the, the aphid that's on the tree. So I know, I, I, I love that story only because when the tree needs help, it calls out and Mother Nature comes and helps it out. Protects it. It's an amazing thought because who knew that these trees, if you put a, a a sound device up to the tree, you can literally hear the tree living. You can hear the tree water moving up the tree. There are special devices that people have designed that they place it on the tree bark and they can literally hear the movement in the life that's going on inside that tree. It is a part of nature that we never ever think about. Now that that tree on a daily basis is what I've heard, what I've seen on documentaries. That tree, that old old tree, drinks about if you look at two bathtubs full of water, that's how much they drink on a daily basis. It's a living organism. There are hundreds of thousands of leaves on a single oak tree, at least my old oak tree. I love that tree. It provided shade during the winter and summer. It did its job. I love that tree. I would go out and look at it every single day. It was right in front of my porch. Now sometimes it gave me work because the acorns and the you know, from all the other trees and, and the leaves during the fall would come down and clog my drains and everything up, my gutters. But I didn't really care because I loved that old tree. It had character. It had life. I called out to its friends in nature and they came and helped it get through the aphid season and all the other insects that attack a tree. Sometimes we don't take time to look at these trees, but they are beautiful beings. And they, I saw a, a map, an infrared map of the, of the world. And it showed the 
the oxygen levels and everything throughout the winter and the summer and the CO2. During the winter time, you saw the the uh, CO2 CO2 go go up. During the summertime, when all the leaves on the trees were alive and doing its doing its work as filters for our air system, you saw the CO T drop tremendously. The pollutions dropped tremendously because these trees were doing their job. So all around us, we have these trees. They're blowing in the wind. They're growing leaves. They're fighting back on some of the nature's dangers that affect trees. It's so amazing that if a leaf, just one leaf, is being eaten by a worm or some type of insect or caterpillar that eats away at leaves, if one, if there's just one single caterpillar on a leaf eating away the whole tree feels it and sometimes they even begin to fight back and and the tree sends off messages through all of its limbs and the leaves become not very tasteful they become dangerously dangerously uh, obstacles for those for those Worms, when they're eating away, they don't like them anymore. So you see, the the tree is constantly fighting for its life every single day. It's being attacked in so many different ways. In some, and in some places, that tree is being attacked by human beings and being destroyed and not being replaced. I tell you that those leaves are such a great filter for our air. And how we live. But it's amazing to me that that tree has the ability to put out a fog. And sometimes you can look out over the trees and you can see this whole fog just moving. It's moving. And sometimes you can just see it coming, being generated out of the trees because some trees are calling for help and they need other insects that can help them eat those aphids. And here comes the ladybug. Zooming in. Next time you see a ladybug, say, hey, thank you so much for helping these trees. Because I need these trees. So I sold my house in South Carolina to a new young family. My my friends that and neighbors didn't want to tell me this, but they cut down that old tree. I was sad to hear that. I lost a friend who protected me during the summertime from the hot heat of South Carolina. Provided me with shade. Provided me with amusements of the chipmunks and the squirrels that lived in that tree who would come down and chatter at me in the morning time, telling me, hey, get away from my home. (laughs) I will miss that tree, an old oak tree that stood there for hundreds of years. It's funny, when you think back and remember the trees when you were young, and how you love to climb. I love climbing trees. How I wanted to have a tree house way up in the tops of the trees. But my dad, he said, no, no, no tree house. It's going to do damage to the tree. Now I understand damage. I understand how trees live and they breathe and they do all these things. So, as I'm telling you this story, I want you to think, because honestly, at the end of this story, which is just a few more words, you're going to hear a business analogy. 
Because remember, this is a business podcast. But I wanted you to understand that that tree, when it needs help, it calls out and it gets help. That tree, when it is being attacked by an aphid, it needs help. And it calls out and people, and not people, but insects come and begin helping out that tree. Those trees have been around for a long time. They have been servicing and helping our communities. So I, I heard that on, 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 in our world, there are more trees then there are stars in the universe. Each one working together with each other. Each one trying to survive every single day in a harsh environment. So what's the business analogy? You probably are all sitting there wondering, where, where, where's the business sense of this all of a tree? Well, it's about it's about small business. Small businesses are being attacked every single day. Especially in this day and age of COVID, they have been attacked by by government. And those small businesses have been calling out for help. They have been putting up their own little smoke screen to get you guys to come in and to support them. And I think Every single one of you have done that. Because you've got to remember that those small businesses are the lifeblood of our communities. Just like trees are, so are small businesses. They are the lifeblood of our community. They're creating jobs. They're supporting our our, uh, local kids' baseball and soccer and, and basketball teams. They are are helping the community whenever they can help them. And sometimes we as people, as human beings, we forget that there really are businesses, are really living organisms that are trying to survive just like the tree is trying to survive. And they're being attacked just like the tree is being attacked. The issue is that when the tree calls out for help, it gets help. The insects come in and they begin eating the, orf- uh, the, the the aphids and killing them off. But the problem is, is that I don't believe that we've been very supportive of the small business because we haven't fought for them. When they were open, when they were trying to survive during this COVID and they were trying to open and they were trying to serve their customers and trying to create business and just trying to live, we didn't do enough, I don't believe. Government ignored them. Government wanted to shut them down. Government hates business, even though they don't understand the process that when a business is open, tax money is being generated for that government, but they don't care about that. Now, we as human beings have got to be those ladybugs. We have got to go in and start helping out these, these small businesses. We have got to be the ladybugs of business. We've got to be going in there and supporting if they're a restaurant, buy their food. If, if they're selling clothing, buy their clothing. We, we, we are the ladybugs. So I would suggest on this Friday <laughs> that no matter where you are in, the, in this world, if you are in India, if you are in Britain, if you are in Brazil, I notice that a lot of people are watching or listening to me from Brazil. I'm so thankful for you and thank thank you for listening. I want you to be the ladybugs and support your small business. I want you to fly in there today to a small business, to a small restaurant and support them. Help them out. Because they've got to make up for lost time. Those who have survived need your help so that they can make up for lost time because they've lost so much over this last year because of government and their inept ability to protect jobs. We have some other issues coming up in the next few months with this new presidential administration that are also anti-business. 
So we have got to be the ladybugs and we've got to protect these small businesses. This minimum wage that's coming, or they want to push, it's going to harm so many small businesses. Remember that $15, and I've repeated this before, but I'm going to repeat it again because I really want you to understand that that $15 turns into $18 because there are other items that need that get attached to that, your workers' compensation, your state disability insurance, a whole bunch of ta- new taxes that get attached to that $15 wage that makes it $18 and becomes very costly for that business. But the president doesn't understand that because he's never operated a business. But you and I, we know we know the facts, we know the truth, and we have got to. We have got to be the ladybugs and go in there and start protecting these small businesses. Otherwise, the Walmarts and the Targets and, and these big companies, the Coles, are going to take over what small business used to be to the to a community. We have got to do better at being ladybugs for small business. So now you understand my analogy of the tree. I love these trees, I tell you. These trees give us the oxygen oxygen and cleans cleans up the air as you and I live every single day. Just like businesses provide jobs for the community and provide products and services for their community and and they support the community back, we need to support them. Just like the ladybug flies into a tree and eats the aphids and kills them off so that the tree can be healthy and live. So we have got to be the ladybugs of small business and we've got to go in there and help them and protect them. I love small businesses. I have fought for small businesses since 1984. Since I have been in private practice, I have fought for small businesses and tried to work with them as much as possible. And I want you to know that they are needed. They need to be loved. They need to be supported. They need to live on. Communities are not about always about the big things in life. But sometimes it's about the small things in life that makes a community feel like a community and makes it a better place to live. So the next time you hear that a business is in trouble, run to that business. Be a ladybug and support that business. So that is my analogy of a tree, a ladybug, and small business. I hope we all learned something from it. And not only that, but the next time that you think that you need to chop down the tree, you think again because that tree is needed. That tree is needed. And the next time you decide, when you walk past a small business, you better look at that small business again because that small business is needed. So that's it for today. So we didn't talk, we, well, we talked a little bit about politics, didn't we? So I broke my rule for today's talk. But it's okay. I think we learned something. We all are going to be ladybugs for small business. That's what we're going to do. Those of you who would like to comment or ask a business question, send me a text at 818-252-5682. Again, that's 818-252-5682. If it's a long question, Send me an email at info at lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. If you want to know what I do during my day job, go to www.lodge, L-O-D-G-E dash C-O dot com. If you love my podcast and if you want to support me and the content that I create every single morning, go to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge, L-O-D-G-E. Listen, I was looking at my stats uh, yesterday and I saw so many countries listening in. Belgium, Republic of the Soviet Republic. It says the Soviet Republic, but I'm not quite sure what countries that entails because that's a whole bunch of different places. Britain, London, 
Iceland. I was just amazed at how many countries listen to me. India is the second, is always the second number, the second country of the highest amount of listeners. So all of you in India, support your small business. They need you. That guy that's on the street corner selling you good stuff, support him. He needs you. But I, I'm, I'm so thankful for all of you who listen to me every single morning. Now, I get up early every morning to record these sessions. And every morning I have the same routine. I go through it every single day to prepare for this for this podcast. And I decided what I'm going to talk about and what I'm not going to talk about and what I think I should talk about and what is really needed to be talked about. So I, I go through this whole thing. I have my journal. I write down my thoughts, and that's what I go off of. Now, sometimes to create my content, and I'm going to do another podcast maybe later on today, but I write a blog, and sometimes that blog becomes a script for my next podcast. It makes it a lot easier for me. So... I ask that you support me. I ask that you listen to me every day. Pass me on to whoever you want to pass me on to. And let's every single day we come to this point of this podcast where we know where we know that we've learned something. Because that's what this podcast is really all about. It's a teaching tool. I make no money off of this podcast. None. Even though I ask for to so support me on on uh, buymeacoffee.com. I've in the in the course of three years I've received two donations of five dollars each. So that's how much money I've made off of that. If you look at the advertisements that you hear on 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 this, it it pays uh, about point zero five <laughs> per download. Do you know how much that that makes in a in a month? If I if I even make twenty bucks or thirty bucks, I am surprised. And sometimes they postpone those out into months before they pay you. So when it comes to making money, a podcast, I have not made any money off of this, but I have enjoyed every single moment of of trying to teach. And I love the time that I spend with you every single day talking about various aspects of life and business and the pursuit of happiness. <laughs> so if you can support me, I greatly appreciate it. If you listen to me, I love it. And let's keep doing this day after day after day until we get tired of each other. <laughs> this is Mike Lodge. Everyone, it's Friday. It's the weekend in some parts of the world. It's Saturday now, but right now it's Friday. I want every single one of you to enjoy this weekend. Get out there. Do something. Enjoy a tree by sitting underneath it and say, Hey, you know what, tree? Thanks. I really appreciate the job that you're doing. When you walk past the business, give them a thumbs up. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye. This podcast has been produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content. Hi, this is Mike Lodge of The Michael Lodge Show. Join me on iHeartRadio and other podcast stations as we talk about wealth, business, and taxes. Oh, and some politics. Join me every day on the podcast that keeps focused on business.